I was indeed muted. Sorry about that. Now I'm not muted. I hope. Uh, as I was saying, thank you, little Annie, for the happy affiliate. Thank you, Mumi Jumala, for letting me know I was muted. That could have been bad. So we booted up at the VS Code today. Um, and. Uh, so it's a bit better than Vim for because the Haskell language server works great. I mean, you can also set up for Vim, but I haven't done that yet. Does the audio work today or now? I hope so. Let's start with day four of the Avid Code. Ah, it's fine now. Great. Thank you. Um, I made like a last minute change, so... That was what happened. Anyway, let's go. Day four, scratch cards. So we were missing snow. We got thrown up by a trebuchet. We found some gears for the gondola. And now we are trying to do something. Okay, so we cook it up. Circle of snow. Oh, there's more. It's warmer than it was on Snow Island. Humid. There's an L sitting across the station. Oh, hello. I'm not sure. That does sound like something. This island island. I bet the gardener will know. He's on. There's a lot of lore this year. Uh, yeah, so yesterday we did three days. Um, hopefully we can do the same today. I'm, I don't think so. Because it's supposed to be tricky, especially in day five. But we'll see how far we get. Uh, in the next two or three hours. All right, and as I said before, you might see little Annie's hand pop up uh, on stream. So be on the lookout. It's an Easter egg. All right, so uh, different island. We need to come up with a quick better naming scheme. Okay, I'll let you borrow my boat. You give us the gardener. Got all these scratch cars. Can't figure out what I won. Here's gonna do some scratch out with the opaque covering. So I just scratch up here, one. Two of these numbers are by work bar, a list of winning numbers, and a list of numbers you have. Okay. Okay. Uh, as far as the elf has been able to figure out, you have to figure out which of the numbers you have appear in the list of winning numbers. The first match makes the card worth one point, and each match after the first doubles the point value of that card. Okay. And uh, cool. So let's get parsing. Example, example. It's gonna be a list of strings. Example equals. Uh, let's put this in here. Oh, let's pump it all in.
Okay, and uh, what is he complaining about now? Hmm. I think it's not actually complaining. I think it's just uh, slow. Let's go here. Day four. GC and day four. Dot HS. Oh, day four and time. Day four. Yeah, there's no parse error. Okay, cool. So let's say data card equals card so we're gonna have card id and we're gonna have nums we're actually gonna have this to be a set of integers and we're gonna have winning let's just make this a list because it's easier to parse it that way uh, and then winning and uh, maybe we have to uh, fix it later let's see deriving thank you show in a way I kind of it's, it's kind of it keeps on to the parse errors quite long huh there was an error here What is up here? Let me see. That's how you do data, no? Mm, yes. Maybe it has some illegal character. No, I'm not getting the Paros error anymore. I don't know what happened there. Uh, let's see. We just derived show. Now, Paros card is going to be string to card. And uh, Paros card. So first, we're gonna say a card space rest is split at split at a, how long is it? One, two, three, four, five. Split at five string. And then we are going to say uh, CID stir rest is going to be span uh, is digit import ah thanks Fabian I think Fabian has tuned in every year it is a whole vibe. It's been a long journey. Uh, okay. Now we are going to, let's just say that this is equal to card. Uh, read at int sister. And we are gonna say here, uh, Language GC twenty twenty one and let's do print map parse card. Oh no, parse card 
Uh, example. Okay, we parse the um, numbers. Yeah, Okazaki, for those who don't know, wrote the book on functional data structures in like 95. And it's just, it's been the standard uh, since then. Let me see, we had like split on somewhere here. Uh, maybe it was in day three. I feel like what did, was it day two? Yeah, uh, split on I'm just gonna copy paste it. I should have like a util library that I import from I don't know, I feel like then you have to watch every show to know the continuity, which is a bit annoying. Uh, okay, then... We're gonna say a... So, nstr... nstr restr is gonna be split on and then we're gonna split on this bar character here okay and then okay we're actually gonna ignore the first character here um or no actually okay and then we're gonna take uh and stirs is gonna be split on and stir and restirs is gonna be split on restir and then we are gonna say map we add int and we're actually gonna trace it now. Yeah, so parser combinators make parsing this super easy, but they also introduce like backtracking and stuff. Uh, so it's it's actually it's actually not that bad to just hand roll a parser. Uh, if you know exactly the format, right? Ah, okay, I need to dump the, the semicolon. Um, and then let's filter not no. So I was actually working on, I'm working on right now something where I just, I don't have that much memory. Like, I have a 500 megabyte file and I need to parse it. And I don't have the memory to kind of be backtracking all the time. So what I do there is I, I you know, I just write a, a, a you know, because I know exactly the format and there's no complex cases. So I can actually just, uh, I can actually just uh, hand write the parser. And because I know exactly the format, it's a lot more efficient that way. So, yeah. So parser combinators are super good if you're doing something complex enough, but they're not always the best. Uh, let me see. Okay. Uh, let's see. 48, 48, 83, 16, 17. Okay. Okay, as far as you have, you have to figure out which of the numbers you have appear in the list.
Okay. So now we're just gonna do. Oops. A GG. Um. So the one I read is also just like the default read parser combinator. Uh, parser combinator read. That's good. Which is a uh, this read p. And then you can just kind of integrate with the read instance. Uh, so then you just basically define the read instance using this read p. And you have to flip between read p and that other one, which is read s. And then you can go from read s to like a read instance. And it's super nice, but it introduces backtracking. So, uh, and which it's fine it, and if you're but if you're running out of memory you might need to hand roll something and even so and this one is not the great greatest but then i moved on to uh i didn't go to mega parsec but i went to like the other parser like the one of the parser libraries that's supposed to be super efficient and it was still slow so it's okay to hand write a parser if you know exactly the format, like we do here. So, uh, let's see. Import data.set. Qualified data.set as set. So, now to do part one, solve, is we're gonna take a card and we're gonna return an int. Uh, num winning. So num winning of a card, and we don't care about the ID here. Uh, NSVS is equal to be uh, gonna be set dot from list NS and uh, set dot from list VS, and then we're gonna do a set dot intersect. I think it's like that. So we're just taking the intersection. Oh. Yeah, intersection. And then we are gonna do set dot size of this. Okay, let's now do map num winning dot parse card right four two two one zero zero um card one has five winning numbers hmm okay a uh, which okay so here we have card one has five winning numbers yes and any numbers you have off the number you have four of them yeah okay so we have four and then it's eight points uh so let's write a uh, two to the power of the number of winning this is the power of now uh, okay we need to do from integral but it's actually yeah, so we need um, We need to remove one first mm -hmm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So I'll get eight points, two points, two points, one. Uh, and here we're getting 0 0.5. Because, ah, because if it's going to be negative one. Okay, let's just do it differently. F. Let F equals a half number is equal to if n larger than zero, then two to the power of n minus one, else zero. And we're gonna, we're gonna do this. Let's do it. There's also a pred function. For removing one. What do you mean? Ah, but the predecessor function. Yeah, okay, so if you negate. Yes. That's a good point. Let's see. 8, 2, 0, 2, 2, 0. And then. Do, 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 sum. Thirteen. Let's do part one. And then we need to put F here. And let's see, print part one of example. 13. Um, I actually want an int here. Two integral. Ah, uh, two. Maybe I need to do a uh, round. Nice. Let's see. Uh, 13 points. We get the puzzle input. Let's see, new file. Okay, now read file input into a print dot part one dot lines. Prelude dot read no pars. That's not good. Let's see here. Trace show ID. Uh, let's just print out the string card. Oh. Okay, because it has more spaces in it. Let's just say rest is drop while not this digit um uh, okay right
now we don't need to show anymore. Two two six four seven. Let's see. All right, part one done. Boom. Twenty six minutes. Not bad. Okay. A uh, your part report finds when you realize what I've been in the back of your part of time. Mm hmm. You win copies of the scratch card below the winning card equal to the number of matches. So if card 10 were to have five matching numbers, you would win one copy each of card 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Copies of scratch cards are scored like normal scratch cards and have the same card number as the card they copied, okay? So if you win a copy of card 10 and it has five maximum numbers, okay. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be some functional memoization, I think. Let's see. So you're going to copy. Okay. Cards, two, three, four. The original card two has two matching numbers. So you win one copy each of cards three and four. Your copy of card two also wins one copy of cards three and four. Your four instances of card three... Wow, you win four copies. Uh, okay, so... Process all the original copy scratch cards until no more scratch cards are won, including the original set of scratch cards. How many total scratch cards do you end up with? Okay, so first of all, we will... Um, we don't need to care about the actual numbers. Okay, so we are going to... Um, we're going to do part two, string. So first we're going to just return a list of the cards, okay? Part two, example, equals, okay, so... We're going to map. Okay, we first we have to uh, parse the card. And then we are going to say card to um C at And we're just going to say card ID and um, winning card. So let's print. So just for each of the cards, we're going to see how many of them are winning. So one wins four, two wins, two, three wins. Okay. So we're just working with these numbers. We don't care about the actual numbers in the card, which is good. Uh, your 14 instances of card five. Uh, your uh, one original and 13 copies have no matching numbers and win no more cards. One instance of card six. Mm-hmm. 
So now we have to figure out a good data structure or algorithm here. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see, a hey. Let's see, um, okay, I'm, I think maybe we can just get away with something quite simple. Uh, so we'll have like a list uh, where P2, so we're going to take the list of ints of ints of ints. So, What I want to do is uh, I want to say P2. So if I have here um, so I'm just gonna uh, so I'm gonna take the first card and I'm gonna say I have one instance of it. And then I'm just going to add kind of instance numbers to each of them. I'm going to see if it works. Okay, so... Um, this is going to be like this, okay. So now I'm going to construct a new list and start. Start is equal to, so it's going to be 1x and map 0 to x's. Int, comma. So then I have one copy of the first card and then zero of all the others. Okay, now go. Empty is just gonna be empty. Go of this is copies. And I don't care about the ID, but I care about the wins here. It's gonna be um, um, X's. This is gonna be X's. This is gonna be C. So this is gonna be the number of the cards. Uh, this is the ID and X's. Okay. This. So for this one, I'm going to say uh, where. 
uh, uh, so the edit and rest is gonna be split at win axis okay and So then for add it, I'm going to say add it prime is equal to map NC is going to be So it's gonna be uh, a n okay so we're gonna just add number times a n c on edit and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna return c c concatenated with go Added prime rest. Go. Oh, okay. Right, I need to combine these lists. Let's just say go. Uh, start. Um, ah, okay. No, this is not... It's actually not like this. Because this is going to take, if it's zero, it's just going to say one. Mm. I think it's maybe just N plus AN. Let's see what happens now. So I end up with one copy of card one. Two instances of card two. Ah, no, one instance of card two. Ah, because all of them have one. I start with one of all of them. So I get one instance of card one, two of instance of card two, four of card three, eight of card four, 14 of card five, and one of card six. Excellent. Now, uh, how many total scratch cards do you end up with? Ding, 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 ding. Let's see. Some map first. So starting on the example, let's run it. And see if we got the right number. All right. We did day four. 
in 40 minutes. Nice. Let's go for day five. It's gonna be tricky. Hmm. But we're doing quite well. Uh, let me actually, I forgot to do this yesterday. Git init. Git add. We had all the Haskell files. And then let's do code dot git ignore. Oh. Okay. Days one, two, three, and four. Okay, we've added. I don't have a repo actually. All fun and games until day five, part two. Okay, anyway, we have a, an hour and a half or more. So let's start with day five. Let's see. Uh, we create a new directory. Day five. We open up day five.hs. Module main where main io main equals print part one example part one equals undefined example is going to be a list of strings usually example equals an empty list okay uh, do cd day five okay let's see you take the boat find the gardener gun garden water source island island is the water source okay we ran to the sand to filter it can't make snow with dirty water don't worry so we get more soon I've been missing making okay so much faster. While you barely have time to agree to this request, and it brings up another. While you wait for the ferry, maybe you can help us with our food production pub. The latest island island almanac, blah blah blah. The almanac has oh my god. That's a lot of stuff. Let me just see the input. Wow. Okay. This time I'm actually going to just put the example so in a file because it's quite long. Yeah, now we're getting into the stuff let's see Okay, uh, so what is an almanac? Okay, see the soil map. See, it's 414. Mm, okay, list all the seeds that need to be planted. It also lists what type of soil to use for each kind of seed, what type of fertilizer to use for each kind of soil, what type of water to use for each kind of fertilizer, and so on. 
every type of seed, soil, fertilizer, and so on. It's then divided with a number, but numbers are reused by each category. That is soil, one tree, and fertilizer, one tree, and each tree. Okay. Seed to soil map. Fertilizer to water map, water to light map, light to temperature map, temperature to humidity map, humidity to location map. Because I wish to describe how to convert from numbers from source category into numbers to a destination category. That is section C, as a C number, the source to a soil number. Hmm. And its corresponding destination, one more, right? It's got entire ranges of numbers that can be converted. It's like extremely contrived, right? Each line within a map contains three numbers the destination range start, the source range start, and the range length. Okay, so it's always three numbers. Okay. Uh. Okay, so let's just start parsing this. <laughs> almanac. Data almanac. And it's equal to almanac. Seeds. Int. Um... Seed to soil. Let's just start with these triplets. Then a soil fertilizer. Soil to fertilizer. Okay. Uh, Fertilizer to water. Water. Water to light. Temperature to humidity. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. First, we're gonna do where LS equals a um, lines example. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, we're just going to split this list on the spaces. So we're going to copy the split on function again, but now we will change it to be Uh, equality actually a uh, a list of a okay uh, c string r r s span not equal to c i think this is actually correct already so And now I'm just gonna do here a uh, split on uh, 
let's just see what it does GHC day 5 or HS oh. day 5 time day 5 oh. okay and we seem to have managed so now a seeds equals um, so this is actually gonna be like this it's gonna be a, a seed stir and then sts stir sdf stir okay it's gonna be seed string that's gonna be special and then it's just the rest in order sorry uh, have you already done the first turn day yes do you plan on posting these to youtube like last year i do but because I'm a Twitch affiliate, I actually it has to wait 24 hours before it can be posted anywhere else. Uh, so I've uploaded the video and it will be available at 11 o'clock. So in two hours for the first three days. Um, but now we're trying to catch up with uh, so we did day four. Day five is supposed to be hard. So uh, I hope it, I hope it works out. Okay, uh, seed string. Okay, it's gonna be seed string. Uh, let's just make it like this. So SDS. Okay, and then SDF. No, I because I want to do the same transformation of all of these. Rest. Okay, a uh, seeds is gonna be seeds. Stir. So we're just gonna say uh, seeds. Base. Okay, and rest is gonna be split at length seeds. Uh, seed string. And then it's a bunch of numbers, so we're going to say answers is split on uh, rest. And then this is going to be equal to map read at int uh, answers language. I don't know if I can have guards here actually. Okay, uh, so this seed string here is a list of strings. Right. But we know it's just gonna be one line, no? That was the problem. In the input, yeah, it's also one line. Good. So we have the seeds. Now for the rest, it's actually gonna be uh, 
Rest prime is equal to map. Uh, tail. On rest. Okay, it just warning me that it's partial. That's okay. Let's see, rest prime. Okay. Then we're gonna map. So, num list. Where parse. Ah, uh, no. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we were actually going to give the pairs here, right? Okay. Uh, pairs. Oh, no. PR. Let's just say PR. Uh, stir is equal to uh, case. A uh, answers split on R1, and then this is gonna be ABC, is gonna be map read at int answers is equal to A, comma B, comma C. And this is gonna be string here. And then we're gonna Um, we're gonna map the tail and map PR dot tail and now this is gonna be a list of these right nice Okay, the parsing is being ha is happening. Mm. So now, I'm just gonna call this maps. Okay, I'm not gonna because we're probably gonna transform it anyway. So. Um, max seeds maps okay because it's like you know map this is one to two two to three three to four four to five five to six six to seven Now let's see what happens now. Rather than list a resource number and its corresponding maps is event trade. So each line within a map contains range of the destination range start, the source range start, and the range length. Okay, so 98 corresponds to 50 and 99 corresponds to 51. Okay. Second line means that 5048. And uh, Okay, so the destination is the first one, and the source is the second, right? Yeah, okay. 
any source numbers that aren't mapped correspond to the same destination number. So seed number 10 corresponds to soil number 10. Oof. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So seed 79, soil 81. Water 81, light 74, temperature 78, humidity 78, location 82. Okay, but do the, the maps never overlap, I guess, right? Yeah. I'm actually gonna flip it. I know it's uh, different in the sample, but it's just quite annoying. So, 48 goes to 52. So we want to check the um, so I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is uh, so it's a range right so um, okay mm -hmm. How do we go? Here's a 79. It's not in the second one, but it's in the... Okay, let's just define first the function. That's very simple. In range. Int. In range. Uh, I... So this is the source, destination, length. I don't actually care about the destination. I just want to know if... Um, I less than equal to S. And... No, that uh, S is less than equal to I. And I is less than equal to S plus L. Boom. So this gives me whether it is in range. Now, mm, let's see. Uh, so transform is going to give me transform is going to give me int there's a list of ranges and then give me a new int transform int i to okay if it's empty it's just the same transform i uh Source test range uh, M at if case in range I am equals otherwise equals to transform. I axis. Now, if it's in the range, uh, it, that means 
that we want to do a destination minus source uh, so we we just do it like this so we're gonna say a uh, see because this one is like uh, so 98 99 correspond to 50 and 51 right 50 and 51 right so if you want to so then to do a uh, 98 minus 50 uh, now this is gonna be as 50 minus 98 which is gonna be minus something that transforms it, right shouldn't it be I yes that's a good point it should be within the range right let me see uh, so 50 so this one is gonna be 50 and 51 yeah exactly so it's less than okay now we're gonna say um, transform all takes an int and a list of list of int 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 to an int transform all is equal to i uh, is equal to fold l fold r and i never remember what is the type of fold r uh, Yes, yeah, so it's the folder is gonna we're gonna transform transform uh, so it's gonna take the range and the number okay and we are going to transform with the let me just flip these here just so we make it Fit into folder. Um, more easily. Okay, uh, so we're gonna transform. We don't need to do this then. Transform, and the initial element is the i, and then the list. Okay, so let me now do. Uh, ding, ding, ding. Part one. We still we have that somewhere here, right? Let's put that further down here. Um, this is gonna be a list of hints. We're not going to use these almanacs. Uh, this is going to be a list of ints. And we're just going to say map. Flip transform all. Maps. Seeds. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, transform. All right. Eighteen forty-three, eighty-seven, forty-two. Uh, okay, that's not good. Ah, because it's soil number. Seed seventy-nine. Hmm. Dollar. Take one. So it goes to seed soil eighty one fourteen fifty semester. So transform works, but my folder is messed up.
81 fertilizer 81 so 14 14 is now going to It's because it's a uh, it's fold R and not uh, fold L, so it's going in the opposite direction, which is uh, kind of annoying. Um, but so we're not going to build up so many thunks here, so it doesn't it doesn't actually matter. Nice. This is pod racing. All right. Uh, now it actually works. So we get 82, 43, 86, 35. Okay. Uh, so part one is minimum of this. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, now. Read file part one. Okay, that's a pretty big minimum. Boom, part one. Fold R is more efficient than fold L. Yes. Because uh, it's because of laziness. Because uh, fold L needs to build up a bunch of thunks versus fold R. Uh, well, fold L versus fold R. Fold R. Uh, so it is subtle. Uh, But basically, fold R will will build up a bunch of thunks uh, like this. See, so here, so fold R, so here you have fold R. Uh, so this is a list, and then you're applying the function, right? So here you can apply the function to one right away, right? Because you already have the first argument. Uh, and also the zeroth element, right? It's it's at the end, right? So you can kind of apply it right away. Versus with fold f, uh, you have to kind of wait. <sighs> it's a bit, uh, it's a bit difficult to explain. Um, see, so fold r is like this, right? So f. I won, right? So you can finish doing this and then you start doing this, right? Whereas here you kind of have to do everything first and then you can then you get the last element and then you can finally start reducing, right? So fxy can't be computed using only a value of x. Uh, yeah. So but you can get away with fold L prime, which is strict. So, and then it forces the application right away. Otherwise it kind of builds up a bunch of thunks because it doesn't need to evaluate them right away. 
So I, I should uh, I should explain this better, um, but it is a it's a subtle point. So if you have a lot of stuff, it might not be better. But here we don't have so much stuff because we only have like five lists, so it's fine. Okay, let's see. Continue to part two. This one is apparently hard, uh, but we have forty-five minutes for our initial budget. Okay, free main read, read, reading line. Looks like a seeds line actually describes a range of seed number. Ah, little Annie just brought some hot sip. Not bad. It's quite hot. But good for the throat. Seventy nine fourteen values. Oh my god. Second range. Yeah, this is gonna be messed up. Um, it would be very nice if we could transform an entire range at once. Let me let me just check in out and uh, just see what happens if we do it the crazy bad way. Um, so see. Two ranges. Two. Seed two ranges. Uh, X, Y. Rest X's. Okay, so, um, it's going to be equal to X. Right. X, comma, dot, dot, comma, X plus Y, right? Uh, is it dot, dot, dot? How do... I always forget this syntax. Okay, so it's one. Ah, there's no comma. I think. Uh, Compile. Uh, so this is a list of ints. Hmm. So it is only a few billion seeds, but we st we can stream it. Which is amazing. Uh, wait, let me just see. One, two, forget this 
It's because I have this extra parenthesis here. It will think it's a list of lists. Okay, now let's... Uh, see how bad it is on the example it should be quite easy on the example but uh, because it's not it's just 28 numbers but uh, let's break out the big guns compile with optimizations okay now it's going to be crazy slow, but I just want to see. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's not going to... Uh, I'm also... Uh, if it's a few billion actually int is not good. Ding, 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 ding. Int integer. Yeah, it's gonna be slow, but uh... okay. Now we need to figure out how to how to basically transform a range. Huh. I'm gonna take a short break, uh, but I'll be right back. Yeah, but this will be running in the meantime. I'll be back in one minute. I'm back and I went to the bathroom but I had an idea um, instead of representing seeds as one int we should represent it as a range and uh, what is a range well a range is actually a list of ranges right 
because each transformation is going to affect a part of the range, right? So, uh, let's see. How we do is, um, Ding, 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 ding. Let's just say here, um, transform range. Integer, integer. And then we have these guys. But not with the. Uh, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> ding, 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 and. Um, Okay, so uh, transform range. Transform all ranges. It's gonna be called all transform range. See, is Foldel Prime still there? Transform mm -hmm. from our ranges, and let's just make sure that these are. I'll evaluate. So now we just need to implement this transform range function. And then we're good. So the base case is easy. I equals empty is going to be empty. Transform range. Ding, 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 ding. So, uh, first of all, we have to, we're going to have to loop over both. Um, So let's have a let's look do it this way transform range uh, i uh, x m m's is equal to um, range prime. 
of i and m. So we're going to operate on all the i's here. Um, let's see. So the affected and unaffected are going to be transform range IM. And then we are going to say transform range unaffected uh, M's. What is this? And uh, we are gonna prefix it with uh, these ones. Okay, transform range prime of uh, so if there's none left. Okay, so let's see, let me see here. Transform range prime m this is going to be affected so far. Uh, affected so far. Af uaf. I and then let me do it this way. No, actually, this way. I think it compiles better. Um, I don't care about the M here. So the empty case is easy. Now we have to write that difficult one, which is going to be transform range prime. So now we're just looking at one. So it's just source, destination, and uh, length. AF, UAF. And here we are looking at. We are looking at the. Um, this current range. So. Range start, range end. No, range start. Range length. Okay. Case. Uh, RS less than or equal to S. So the source and Uh, so if we're in the range S less than RL Okay um, So here we're in the range And now we have to split this up. Um, uh, 
we have to split it up by saying um, so the range here is um, How are you going to split it up? So now we know that this particular range is affected. But how many are affected? Uh, so that it affects a... So let's just do an if statement. So if... Ah, no. Sorry, this is going to be RS plus RL. So if a RL is less than or equal to R, so then it just affects the whole range. Okay, then um, we just uh, we say transform range. Uh, prime RNG and then all of them are affected uh, in we have prime uh, UAF Axis. So we're going to have another case here, otherwise, so if it's not in the range, uh, it might be that the... Uh, RS less than or equal to uh, S. Might be that part of the range is affected, right? Ooh, I'm getting a bit confused with all the ranges. But the thing is that because you might be splitting up a range. <sighs> but I mean, you get the idea what we're trying to do here. We just have to get this tricky function right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me just uh, see. Example. Okay, let me see. Um, transform range prime. So this is the function we're trying to write. And we have uh, this map. So where's destination, right? And we have uh, this range, uh, range start, range out. 
Okay. Transform range prime. Uh, let's say it starts at one, and it's gonna shift everything by one. It's gonna shift five numbers by one, and we are talking about range that starts at one and ends at ten. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna return two new ranges. Um, It's gonna return two new ranges, right? It's so, uh, so because it's the numbers one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, let's make it even more difficult. Zero to zero, and the range length is ten. So it's going to return the ranges, right? It's going to say that uh, zero. This is a range now. And it's going to return the range as zero comma one. So zero is unaffected. And then these are going to be shifted by one. So it's going to be two, three, four, five, six and then the other ones are going to be unaffected so that's going to be six so this is actually going to be um two and um Two and five, right? The range length is not affected. Uh, well, it is affected. So it's gonna affect two, five of these. And then starting at six, there's gonna be one, two, three, four. So what's going to happen is that we're also going to have to merge ranges at some point, I think. Okay. So let's see. Let's just make this uh, easy, right? So, where the change is equal to D minus S. Now this is the change we're going to apply to the range. Um, Here we're not going to change the length, so we're just going to say rs plus d minus s. This is the change operator. I was going to put life to it. Yeah. The real problem is how to split the range. Into the correct, like the affected parts and unaffected parts. Uh, 
Okay, so... And then this is gonna be UF map C affected. I think this is actually the, just a trick. Okay. So you have um, S two S plus R. Now, what part of this is uh, all right? What what part of this intersects with uh, R R S to R S plus R L? Do do do. Okay, um, Ding, 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 ding. Uh, this is a tough one. So we'll finish this one and then we'll go to bed. Okay, so let's see. Um, if S plus R if S is less than or equal to RS and um, F and uh, S plus R is larger than equal to rs then we're in the range right and then there is some intersection
or it's actually this or um, RS plus RL Ah, there's a lot of like equalities that are going on here you see okay so let's just say here so we're gonna take um so if uh, the range is less than or equal to s and um There's so if, it, if there's a zero, so now we're gonna say zero to one, right? Um, and um, and RS plus RL. And so. larger than s and then we have something unaffected in the beginning um, UAF is equal to, um, it's actually just going to be RS, the range start to, and the length of it is a RS minus S. Okay, I can probably just do it like this. Uh, that you are uh, you so unaffected lower is just RS and then RS minus S. UF higher. So the higher part of the range is gonna start at um S plus R and the length is gonna be, be um, something and then we just kind of filter out then in if S and D A F L larger than zero Filter larger than zero second. Otherwise, it's just an empty list. Filter something here also. And then uh, UAF is just UAFL. UAF high.
this is such a because it's not like an interesting data structure problem right i think we just if we just have get this correct then it's fine mm -hmm. Let's just write the affected range. range uh, this is also just the case if it's like connected if it's all within right All right. This is like a... It's like an intersection problem, right? Let's, so let's just write out the ranges, okay? R1 is equal to S comma S plus R. R2 is equal to RS, RS plus RL. Now 
Now I want to see how 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 they intersect. Specifically how RS intersects, R2 intersects with R1. So if R2 is entirely within, so case one, then we just have a S, S plus R, RS, Case two is that they are like this. Case three is um is um, the other case, right? So it's S, R, S, S plus R, L, and case four is just, you know, no intersection at all. Okay, so now let's uh, just compute the cases. Okay. AF UAF is equal to case. Um, case uh, R1 Okay, so let's check here So if S Is less than or equal to RS And um, RS plus RL is less than S plus R. Case one. Case two is S is less than equal to RS plus RL. And Oh uh, no, okay, case this is RS less than equal to S. I think we need more here. And RS plus RL. So RS so S is less than RS. Okay, so this is RS is less than equal to S. And S is less than equal to RS less than RS plus RL and RS plus RL are less than S plus R. Uh, ah, yes, good point. RS is S plus R plus RL. Okay. 
let's re-enumerate these because otherwise it's gonna get confusing. Two, three, four, five. Let's actually start with this one because it's the, the easiest case in some sense. Um, yeah, let's just do it over. Okay, here we have that RS plus RL is less than... less than s and ah uh, this is actually two cases right or s plus r is less than rs Then the affected is empty and the unaffected is just RS. Okay. So we've done a uh, so list maybe right here. I remember doing something similar when I was writing a video game engine thing where you do collision checks, but then you don't have to. Um, You don't have to do too much, actually. Um, Cause then you just need to check the collision. You don't need to actually find the range that comes out. Okay, okay, so here we have S, it's listening to RS. And RS plus RL is less than S plus R. So here, the entire range is affected, and none of it is unaffected. Now we're gonna get now we're into the non trivial cases. So here RS I'm probably missing more like checks. But it's okay. RS is less than equal to S and S plus R is less than R S plus R L. Okay, here what's affected So what's affected is a It's just source to so S to R is S is affected, but unaffected is gonna be uh, R S S minus R S um, and uh, S plus R to um, RS plus RL minus SR. Uh, 
I think it's like this. Here, R S is less than equal to S, and R S plus R L is less than S plus R, and S is less than equal to R S plus R L. Yeah, I think that's how you disambiguate here. So here, the affected range is um, starts at S and RS plus RL minus S. Okay, and then the unaffected range is R2, the unaffected one is RS. This minus RS. Um, and RS plus RL. RS plus RL. And then um, S plus R minus. So there's some uh, similar to this case, right? Which is good. Okay, I hope this is, uh, we're not messing it up completely here. <laughs> Case five. Okay, here S is less than equal to RS and RS is less than equal to S plus R. And um, S plus R is less than or equal to RS plus RL. Okay. So here the affected range is from RS to um, S plus R minus RS. And the unaffected range is a... Ah, sorry. Right, okay, so here S is within the range. So here S is outside the range. So the, the unaffected range is actually from uh, S plus R to RS plus RL minus or okay otherwise error transform range prime uncaught case R1, R2. Um, that RS plus RS. Where does it say RS plus RS? Did I fix it? Okay, we ran it for 15 minutes, it didn't work. And now we're just gonna say AF, UAF.
Aha. Line 82. All right. See, the affected range was correct. Uh, but actually... So here we're dealing with... Uh, we're supposed to be doing... Uh, this case. So S to R is correct. And then this is RS to S minus R. That's correct. This is a S plus R, which is correct. But uh, you're right. So RS plus RL. Aha. Uh -huh. Wait, so RS plus RL here is, um, this is going to be 10. Let's see. We are indeed in case three. Um, so the second one is wrong. The six is correct, but so RS plus RL. is supposed to be 10. Um, Okay, and it is 10, but S plus R uh, I have to have a uh, parenthesis. Okay, this is good. And then we're gonna just do C on AF. Okay. <sighs> so now to see if this actually works. Okay, now we have the transform range for one of them. Now let's go back to here. Okay, transform range. Form range. I M M S is equal to um So here you're gonna say where go uh, now we have to kind of Look through it. Yes, I know that. It's gonna be an off by one error somewhere. But we can only hope. Okay, um.
Okay, so first we do um, transform. Transform range prime. Okay, so empty. Okay, so now we go again. Uh, this is gonna be. Uh, this is gonna be affected, unaffected. Transform AF UAF Okay, and we start off with this and this and I Okay, and uh, this is just uh, AF UAF. Now let's do it here again. Uh, this is affected, unaffected. So that's one map. This is going to be equal to. Uh, AF and uh, transform range uh, UAF MS range prime AF UAF uh, RRS equal to uh, where AFN UAFN is equal to transform one range uh, and here's the M and here's the R transform One range a These can actually be. Uh, let's just make them integers. Int integer. Okay, so what is the loop here? So we transform one range. And we take one of them. And then we just. Yeah, we just loop kind of. Okay, um, yeah, exactly. We're not adding anything. It's going to be a transform range prime AF, AFN, UAF, UAFN, RS. Now let's look at the example. Let's put that uh, here. And now we're just going to look at what happens for the example. Okay, for the first part of the example, print transform one range. 
Now transform range. Transform range. Okay, and we're just gonna put the 79, 14, um, 55, 55, 13. Okay, and then the maps are um no right ninety eight fifty two and fifty fifty two forty eight fifty seven thirteen fifty seven thirteen All right. Good. So after the first round, it's eighty one fourteen. Part two. <laughs> Transform all. Transform all ranges and then C C two ranges. We're gonna change this one to it just be the ranges. Okay, now it's saying transform all ranges. Just get the <laughs> okay. I think what I'm trying to do is, um Transform all ranges and seeds, ranges, seeds, 
maps on the example ah but it returns an empty list it's not good okay one minute again another bathroom break it's all the tea I'm drinking be right back. Okay. It's not doing very well. Let's just see first. Okay. So then, then transform range. Uh, This is actually supposed to be I. Okay, so uh, 50 and then 48 of them. Or bump by two. And then from... Uh,
So I don't think this is correct, right? So from 79, so that's 89. Okay, that one is not affected by the first one. Because it doesn't start at 98. And then... Um, from 52, so 298, basically, is going to get shifted by 2. Okay, so that's okay. So this is the correct for the first one. And then for the second one, so for 15 to 37, uh, from 15, so 15 plus 37, is um, 40, 15 plus 37, 45 plus 7, that's um, 52. Okay, so that shouldn't affect anything. Um, 52, 53 and 54, that's not affected either. Um, Okay, so the second one, the third one doesn't affect any of them. Uh, 15 to so 0 to 15. And that matches what we saw before, right? Okay, now let's take 3. So from 58.3, we're going to take 8. Okay, let's just uh, do all of them now. Ah, okay, now it actually worked. I don't know, I, yeah, maybe I just didn't compile when I ran before. It's definitely an up by one somewhere because we're getting what your zero ranges. Um, <coughs> let's just see, um, now let's just, um, filter larger than zero dot second. And then we're just going to take the minimum. Okay, so it works for the... This one. The example. Now let's check if we are really killed by those up by one errors or what. We should really be filtering out those zero ranges right away. Um,
Okay, there's an uncaught case. After the first map in the input. That's not good. Um, Let's make this nicer. Okay, so here, um, this is S and S plus R. And then this is RS plus... Ah, okay, so here they are equal. I think this should be... Um... Less than... No. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the problem here. Um, <laughs> yes, we'll meet Jamala. You've helped a lot so far, but uh, that's not really helping. Uh, so here we have the case that the endpoints are equal. Okay, so this one, so it's actually, um, it's this case right here, except the endpoints are equal. I'm just going to make all of these equal, man. Screw it. The minimum was zero. That does not seem uh, correct. Some of them are zero. I'm gonna see if this one works. But I don't think it will. Oh my god. 
It was the right answer. Okay, we completed day five. Boom, it only took us... Uh, an hour? An hour and a half? Or two hours? I think two hours. Yeah, because we finished day three in like 45 minutes. Day four in 45 minutes. Okay, cool. Let me just see uh, why some of these were zero. So this is RSRL, RSRL, S, R, RS, S plus R. S and none of these seeds are zero. RS RS plus RL. I don't know why some of them would be zero because um, uh, so change changes them right so rs plus d minus s um are some of these ranges zero like are some of these numbers the same uh, so here we have Zero source. So I guess it just for some of them. Um, it just. You know, I worked too long on this. Um, already like there's just there's just some case where um, where it um, like the change will be it's gonna it's gonna change um, into a zero And that's it's it's doing that so the length is the same, but um, so then D minus S becomes RS for some reason. But it's still that's okay, right? Because some of these like zero is a valid seed, like index, right? So I don't. I don't know exactly. So I think one of these should not uh, be. Maybe one of these should be like a less and not a less than equal to. So there's some off by one error somewhere, but we got away with it, um, which is good. Anyway, that's all for today. Uh, day one, two and three will be up soon uh, in 10 minutes on the YouTube channel uh, and now I'm gonna upload this to the YouTube channel and then it will be available 11 o'clock tomorrow European time I'll probably stream tomorrow as well we gotta keep going if we want to catch up a uh, heard mixed messages about six and seven but you know we're at least on day six now and uh, so if we do six and seven tomorrow then we're only one behind right so then we can do eight and nine but you know it's not really 
Okay, so six and seven are both really chill. Seven, okay. So tomorrow we might be able to do six, seven and start on eight. And then we're probably, we're about to catch up. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. I might have to uh, stream later also because I'm going for a Christmas market thing, I think. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed some Advert of Code. Um, what was the key takeaway here? Day four, it was just parsing and then some number stuff. Uh, day five, I think the key takeaway here is <laughs> if you're getting overwhelmed, uh, just split it into cases and then write all the cases down. Um, because it wasn't any like, oh, you can just do minus minus and then it works. Because it was really, uh, you really had to do it case by case. And it worked out. We had a weird part at the end. And if anyone knows why, um, please comment. I would like to know. All right. Thank you so much. See you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. And then, wait, yes, okay. See you again tomorrow, bye-bye.